Welcome to Books of the Book. We've been studying the letters of Paul to the Thessalonians, and in previous programs we've been working our way through 1 Thessalonians, and now we're at the very conclusion of that series of studies, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verses 12 through 27. I'm John Pauline, Dean of the School of Religion at Loma Linda University, and with me is my pastor, John Ciccarelli, pastor of the Cala Mesa Seventh-day Adventist Church. John? John, it's good to be together again, and we're finally bringing 1 Thessalonians to a close. Mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to 2 Thessalonians in our next episode. But today we're looking at verses 12 through 27, and Paul just gets really practical here. He talks about leadership. He has a lot of admonitions that we're going to look at, but uh, really practical stuff for the church. So I'm looking forward to our, our study today. Why don't we jump into that? All right. Well, this is one of those places where the Greek scholarship really uh, is extremely helpful. Because in uh, verses 12 through 22, you have a series of 17 admonitions. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, the first nine of these, uh, which are about mentoring and discipleship, you know, leaders and, mm -hmm. and members, how they relate to each other, the first nine, the verb comes first. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the verb, and then you have a little statement. Then the last eight, uh, where he's talking about uh, how to deal with uh, attitudes, uh, toward prophecy and attitudes uh, relating to prayer and joyfulness and so on. The verb comes at the end each time. So you have these, these clipped statements. Mm -hmm. First nine, the verbs at the beginning. Second eight, the verbs at the end. It's a little bit like black preaching, I yeah, think. He's, he's, he's got a cadence going He's here. on a roll. <laughs> he's on a roll, and uh, I think we're going to have some fun with this. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Great. So why don't we get started, and uh, we can go right into verses 12 and 13. Uh, right. Perhaps you could read that for mm -hmm. us. Paul says, Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you, and who are placed over you, and who admonish you, and to regard them super highly on account of their work. Be at peace with one another. A couple things I want to say about the, that passage right away. First of all, it builds on verse 11. Mm -hmm. He summed up everything he said before with encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Be encouraging to one another. I think what we're getting into here is sort of uh, explicating that. Encourage one another, mm. you see. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the other thing I'd mention is in these two verses, he's talking to the members of the church and how they're supposed to relate to their leaders. Mm. You know, as a pastor, I really like this verse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I like what he brings up here, though, because um, there's a lot to be said for mentoring and discipleship. I mean, Jesus said, go make disciples. Uh -huh. And sometimes I think if we're not careful... You know, things can just become all about programs, you know, at the church. Programs, more programs, more programs. And, and you can have lots of programs without any discipling taking place, without any intentional leadership taking place. And as leaders, we have to be extra careful. And we've talked about this in some of the other episodes about keeping ourselves in check. Mm -hmm. that we're not just trying to build our empire, you know, our personal empire, but that we are, by the grace of God, allowing him to build up his kingdom through us in the lives of people. And that's something I know I always have to keep myself and check on that I'm not just about productivity or, or empire building. I don't want that at all. I want God's kingdom to reign in me and to reign in those that I'm leading. And by His grace, that happens. Um, you know, when I came to the Calamesa Church, and uh, they had their search committee together. Uh, some people may know Louis Venden, and he was on that search committee. A little intimidating, you know, when you show up to the search committee and Louis Venden is sitting there. Uh, one great. of my faculty and very highly regarded. Oh yeah. yes, and, and <laughs> great preacher. And um, I asked Lou. Afterwards, I said, I said, Lou, if God wills it that I come here in Calamesa, would you be willing to enter into a mentoring relationship? Mm -hmm. I saw God was giving me a gift in Lou if I came to Calamesa to continue to build into my life as one of my mentors. And of course, you know, he said, oh, he's such a humble man. He says, oh, oh this would be a mutual thing. Mm -hmm. you know, I said, no, no, Lou, let's get this right. It'd be completely downward mentoring. <laughs> you would be mentoring me. And, and we get together about every six weeks. We have lunch together, and, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God just oozes out of him. But we need to allow the church to be a safe place where we can have mentors who can minister the love of God to us and grow us and disciple us uh, in that. And our churches, I think, it's important that they're multi-generational. Mm. One of the sad things is we see so much segregation uh, with the generations. And I think we miss out on a lot of the discipling in that way because we have, we have this cutting off of the generations and so we don't have the older generations building into the younger generations. And the younger generations are, are missing out as well. Um, I was leading worship one time at a church in San Diego. 
and uh, we would do some some choruses, but we'd do some hymns as well. And mm -hmm. and uh, we did uh, Savior like a shepherd, you know, lead us, you know, that hymn. And I had someone in their in their forties come up to me and say, "Wow, I really love that new song you did today." And I said, "What song was that? <laughs> the one about the shepherd?" Mm -hmm. And I thought, "My goodness, this person has never heard this hymn, and he's been raised in the Adventist church his whole life." Huh. Obviously, there was some some segregation there, but it's important. It's important that we that we keep the generations together and that we be intentional about our mentoring and our discipling. And so I, I could go on forever, you know, on this, but I'm going to I'm going to stop it there so we can continue moving to our text. But this is something that's close to my heart. All right. Uh, appreciate that very much. You're, you're probably wondering uh, what uh, Pastor John's so excited about in this <laughs> text. It's because Paul is telling the members how they should treat their leaders mm -hmm. and uh, he tells them to respect them highly. He says, those who labor among you who are placed over you and admonish you, respect them highly. You see, he's encouraging people. He says, somebody who's in charge within the church. It's tough work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult stuff, and they need encouragement too. We sometimes say, well, the pastor does all the encouraging. We, we just sort of knock back. But mm -hmm. no, pastors need encouragement too, and, and Paul is, is saying this here. Now, at this stage of the church's history, it's very early. Mm -hmm. And they don't have officers yet. Later on, there were elders and deacons and bishops and, and, and different things like that. But this is only 20 years mm -hmm. after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And basically, the only office here is this is those who are placed over you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, the early church shied away from the leadership language of ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, they had words that we get words like hegemon. Uh, monarchy. Uh, these are all based on the, on the Roman Latin and so on. And it has the idea of someone who's in power over you. The only leadership word that the early church accepted from that whole scene mm. was this word, those who are over you. Mm. Because in the Roman context, those who were over you were people who cared about you. Mm. It, was, it, it was almost a family kind of a thing, the caring connection. And the Christian said, that's a word we can use. Mm. But these other words, they only applied to Jesus. Yeah. It's very interesting. It interesting. Later on, they picked up words from the synagogue and the home mm -hmm. that they use elders, deacons, and so on, language that they used for leadership. Now here he says, respect those who labor among you, regard them super highly. Paul mm. loves that word, super. Mm. Regard them super highly who admonish you. Mm. And this word admonish is a tough Greek word. It, it, it kind of means knock some sense into you. <laughs> so do you ever have to do that, Pastor? Ah, uh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> no, but sometimes Tell me you about know, it. <laughs> I, I have members who, who, uh, who recognize I need some sense knocked into me too every once in a while, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, but no, it's, uh, it's, but it's not always welcome. I mean, I think personally, yeah. it's hard for us to welcome when someone comes up and, and admonishes us, come, maybe tries to knock some sense into us. Uh, but, uh, but it's that, I think it's that tough love, uh -huh. you know, being willing to say the things that, that someone might need to hear because you love them so much. Yeah. You know, um, if we never talked honestly in that way, then, then uh, we prevent people from growing in their relationship with God and maybe their relationships with others. Mm. And I mean, look at Jesus, look at all the tough love he gave to the religious leaders when he was there. There was a lot of tough love mm -hmm. and he spoke those things because he loved them but it's not easy. Well, confrontation is critical to relationship because it's letting people know that there's things that they're doing mm -hmm. that will scuttle the relationship unless they're made aware of that, unless some change comes in. As a Bible scholar, I have to deal with that. Uh, when I'm going to some tough biblical text mm. and I make it clear, everybody says, oh, wonderful. <laughs> I, I just love that, you yeah. see. But then sometimes I go to a text that a person thought was clear, was clear to them. Yeah. I say, you know, that's not really what it's saying. Yeah. Suddenly, uh, you're not so popular changes. anymore. Yeah, you see? And, and so uh, Paul here is saying, look, those, this is tough work, yeah. this admonishing. So give them respect and, 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 and show the right uh, attitude. Mm. Interestingly enough is there's a whole background here. I talked about the popular philosophers in earlier programs mm. that were going around in the cities just like Paul was. Mm -hmm. And they had this whole idea of how to diagnose where people were at and to be sensitive to when they're open mm -hmm. to conviction and mm -hmm. when they're not, when you can admonish them mm -hmm. and when you can't. Uh, there's a right timing to talk to people. 
-hmm. There's an appropriate remedy and an inappropriate remedy. All that stuff is discussed in detail mm -hmm. in ancient Greek writings. And uh, examine yourself before you admonish somebody else. Yeah. Paul adds one thing mm -hmm. to all of this, and that is that God ultimately is the model of leadership. Mm -hmm not us. Mm. And if we're following God's model of leadership, uh, then we will know when to admonish and when not. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Paul doesn't balance it out here. Yeah. He can be tough on leaders too. In 2 Corinthians 10, 13, he holds them accountable. So balance is important here. Mm. Yes, hold your leaders respectful, honor them, but at the same time, hold them accountable. Yeah. Both things are necessary and, and finding that balance can be the tough thing. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's important to remember that that leaders, pastors uh, and so forth are are still in discipleship. They're still being led by God, hopefully. And we're still, you know, it's not like the pastor is the master discipler and every, he's discipling everybody, but, but he's also being discipled by God through his congregation or whoever the leader might be, those that they're leading. And, uh, and looking to God to continue to disciple him. And when that happens, then we become, like you said, lead like Jesus. Jesus was a servant leader. It was, you know, oftentimes we look at uh, organizational structure and leadership and we think of this pyramid with the leader at the top. But Jesus really flipped that pyramid upside down, you know, where he was at the bottom and he was lifting and he was serving and he was edifying. And that's really the model of, of leadership that we see in God that that he became a servant, you know, left heaven to come and serve us, to love us so much and to, and to save us, you know. And, and the other part that's so important, I think, with leadership is that who we are when the spotlight's not on mm -hmm. is, what, is where, who we really it's are. It's about character. Exactly. And we talked about that in chapter 2, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Well, we need to move ahead, verses 14 and 15. And uh, let me mention once again, these translations are my own so that we can try to get some of the flavor of the grammar of the Greek uh, from time to time and the, and the unusual meanings of words. We also encourage you, brothers, it says, admonish the unruly, cheer up the discouraged, take an interest in the weak, mm. be patient with everyone, see that no one pays back evil for anyone else's evil, but always pursue what is good toward one another and toward everyone. Here I see him talking to leaders about confronting people mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, this, uh, the language here is very interesting. He says, admonish, knock sense into <laughs> the unruly. Uh, the, word, the Greek word for unruly here kind of has the meaning of uh, people who are willfully difficult. Mm -hmm. There are people who are just messed up, you know, mm -hmm. but there are other people who are trying to be difficult, who, mm -hmm. who are disruptive by nature. Mm -hmm. These are the ones you knock sense into. He says, then there are people who are discouraged. Mm -hmm. uh, the Greek word here actually could be translated little souls. Mm -hmm. These are people who think small, mm -hmm. uh, people who don't have a lot of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And then he says, uh, in addition to that, take an interest in the weak. Mm -hmm. The weak are people who have moral and spiritual limitations. They're easily discouraged. Mm. They're fearful. In, in fact, pastors sometimes stay away from them because they say, they're never going to change. Mm. These are people, no matter what you say, they never carry it out, mm. you see. So uh, Paul here is counseling uh, the leaders how they're to deal with people. And, and the final word in this verse is where he says, uh, look, don't pay back evil for evil. Mm. If you're a leader, evil's going to happen. Yeah. If you're a leader, you're going to be criticized. Mm -hmm. If you're a leader, you're going to have to suffer. Don't pay back because the minute the leader pays back mm. the way he's been treated, mm. that uh, it, it disrupts the entire yeah. community. It's yeah. a disaster. So uh, some super counsel from Paul here about practical everyday affairs. Mm. It's time to go for a break. We'll see you back in just a little bit. <laughs> 